Okay, so welcome to day three of what would normally be a one day US Open local qualifier here at Marietta Country Club in Kennesaw. But the weather the last couple of days has been anything but nice. We've had, according to Jonathan's dad, Stephen, almost six and a half inches of rain in the last two days. Just about four inches on Monday and another two and a half yesterday. Good news is the forecast calls for zero rain today, but the breeze could pick up to at least 15 miles an hour. And it should come out of a different direction today. So the south-southwest, maybe from the west-northwest, behind this cold front that brought all the stormy weather the last couple days. Jonathan was three under. After nine holes, three birdies, six pars. And I found out last night that John Eric Alford has advanced to the sectionals out of his local qualifier. And that's good news for him. Chris Waters, by the way, turned in a 367 yesterday. Jonathan is tied with Chris at the moment. Waiting for them to restart. Should be any minute now. He's got to play the Mountain View 9, which will be his back 9. This is the 427 yard par 4 opening hole on the Mountain View 9. Downhill, slight dog leg right. And there's the signal to restart. So now Jonathan on the tee with a 427 yard par for first, his 10th. 281 to reach the bunker on the left, 293 to carry it. Trees on both sides. And the breeze feel like it's into and from their right. Great start. This is a little left. Jonathan is from the left side of the fairway here at number one, his 10th. The flag is 17 on and 8 from the right. There's a bunker right of this green, in which I saw Connery Meyer pull out three years ago when he played with John Eric Alford. Plenty of green left of this flag. Don't want to miss right though, past that bunker. Now it's pretty calm out here compared to about five, ten minutes ago. Underneath the hole. Putting for his fourth birdie of the round. Once again, he's tied with Chris Waters at the moment, who turned into 67 yesterday. I think that's the low round in the clubhouse to this point. And there's
here's a view of the clubhouse here. Maybe at a country club, and to the left is the golf shop. There's the first tee up there. Down to the fairway, and then come up to the green, and you'll see Jonathan Kepler, Kepler getting ready to putt for birdie. Three birdies yesterday, but none on the par fives. So he only has one par five to play, and that's the eighth. Just to get the four under par. greens probably slower than they were yesterday because of the two and a half inches of rain extra that fell yesterday and I'm starting to see some breaks in the clouds here early on in Kennesaw forecast calls for improving conditions today should turn partly cloudy by this afternoon. Once again, no rain, no thunder, no lightning in the forecast. For the first time since Sunday. And Jonathan has his putt for par here at the first. To stay at three under par. Well, there's something we did not see yesterday before the weather delay. I think that two things. One, he didn't have a single three putt yesterday, and he also didn't have a bogey yesterday. When that bogey drops him to two under as he heads to the par three second hole. at a 178 yard par 3 of the second hole. The hole is on 22 and 6 from the left. You don't want to miss left today. Coming off his first 3 putt and first bogey. Comes around back there at number 1. He only missed one green yesterday, so he's hit 9 out of 10, 90% of his greens so far, and he's only missed two fairways out of 7. This might be going at it. Yeah, about, I'd say about pin high right. Quality shot. Two under on the par threes. He birdied 12 and 17 yesterday before the weather delay. Oh, actually, Jonathan's tee shot finished beyond pin high right, but this is for birdie here at the second. Top eight advanced to the sectionals and two alternates. Georgia sectionals will be played at Piedmont Driving Club Monday, June 7th. The same day as the Dogwood Qualifier, and what a bounce back for Jonathan. Bogey? What bogey? It's back to minus three, and he heads to the short par four third hole. So 
Hamilton now on the tee, the 348 yard par 4 third hole, Dogger to the right. 262 to run out of fairway going towards that fairway bunker at the dogwood. 284 to run out of fairway near the lake. And if you're going for the green and one, it's 309 to the front. Looks like a little hybrid for, John for Jonathan. Coming off that bounce back birdie at number two. Hit his second shot here at the third. He's found another fairway. He's now hit 75% of his fairways, or six out of eight. But his pin today at the third is cut just eight paces on from the front edge and in the center of the green. Anything short could catch a slope and roll down into the penalty area. There. I think that's going to stay up there. We'll have that for back to back birdies. And there's the penalty area that extends from right at the 13th hole, right there at par 5. Par three second. And then front in the green here at the third. And this is a view from behind the third green. And Jonathan Kepler has a birdie putt. This will be for his fifth birdie of this qualifying round and to get him to minus four. Just birdie the second after bogey in the first. Downhill putt for Jonathan. Turn right toward the end there. We head to the uphill par three fourth hole next. One of the toughest holes here at Marietta Country Club. As I'm sure Jonathan knows, he's a member here. Two put par from above the hole. So JK now stand, stands on the tier, the 203 yard par three fourth hole. Plays about five yards uphill. So a flag that's cut 22 on and six from the right. I saw Jonathan birdie this hole in the 2014 qualifier along with his playing partner, former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket Kyle Scott of South Africa. I've seen Justin Johnson birdie this hole also in the 2015 mid amateur first round. The last time they played this U.S. Open local qualifier, Daniel Gale made a double bogey here. So this is not an easy par three. Speaking of par threes, Jonathan is three under on the par threes. Birdies at 12, 17, and two. And this is the last of the par, last of the par threes. There are five of them. See if we can go four under on the par threes. And this 
starts out to the left. Not sure if that found the green or not. But better to miss left and right with today's flag. This is what faces Jonathan here at the fourth. This steep slope to deal with. It's Mr. Green. Short and left here at the fourth. Only his second green missed out of 13. At that left to save par. Already has one bogey since the restart. As the breeze starts to pick up again, could blow as much as 15 miles an hour later on today. Fourth green is around it. Can't go really miss this green. And Jonathan salvage par. Keep his scramble in. That perfect 100%. Got up and down at 11 yesterday, his second hole. Scrambling now, that's the second bogey. He plays the five par threes and two under par now. That's where his overall score is now. Hit to the par four fifth. Maybe try to bounce back again, like he did earlier. Jonathan now on the tee at the 413 yard par 4 fifth hole. 236 to reach the first bunker, 256 to reach the last one. Both down the right. Trees on both sides. Dog way to the left. This hole plays about 10 yards downhill from tee to green. Has that found the short grass? He's only missed two fairways out of eight. This is the ninth fairway of 13. Jonathan has just missed the fairway to the left here at the fifth. Try to play his approach shot. Should be a good angle because the hole is cut 13 on and 6 from the right. And he's gone right at it. Well, last time he made a bogey, he bounced back with a birdie. He's trying to do the same thing here at the 5th. Can he do it? So this is how close Jonathan hit his approach shot to the fifth hole. So this could get back to minus three. Enjoying Chris Waters on that score. Chris is finished. We'll head over to the tough uphill par 4 6, which plays as a par 5 for the members. 451 yards. 
one of the longest par fours at Marietta Country Club. Jonathan getting ready to tee off on the 451 yard par 4 6, which plays about 10 yards uphill from tee to green. 256 to reach the first fairway bunker on the left, 284 to carry the second one, and then 301 to reach the fairway bunker on the right, and 310 to carry it. In between those bunkers, that fairway is about 20 odd yards wide. So it's kind of narrow in that driving zone. Nearly hold out for Eagle here back in 2014. Once again, Jonathan has just missed the fairway to the left, this time here at the par 4 6. The pin is 17 on and in the center. And from where he's playing, it should be about 5 yards uphill from where he is to the green. So again, this whole place is a par 5 for members of this country club. This place is a par four for this qualifier, as does number 10. So 10 gets moved up to 486, which is 55 yards shorter than it can play from the far back tee. Probably guard against a flyer. You don't want to go too far over this green. You end up near the seventh tee box. And to the right of the seventh tee box is a bunch of trees and eventually New Salem Road, which I'm sure is marked OB. New Salem Road is the eastern boundary of this golf course. And this is the furthest south. Southern portion of this course. Stylesboro Road is the northern boundary. And on the other side of Stylesboro Road, you got the Overlook 9, which is separate from the main 18 holes. Tell you where that's finished up. Third shot for Jonathan at the six. Came up short of the green. But his approach, keep rolling. And he's left it underneath the hole. He's got that for par. That's his third green missed. Now out of 15, he's gotten it up and down once out of two attempts. Three holes left after this, and they're zipping along. They've almost played six holes in an hour. Jonathan for his par at the six. Just birdied the fifth. You don't want to give up another one. Wow, first nine holes, no bogeys. Last six holes. Three bogeys. 
back to two under. Jonathan now on the two to 453 yard par four seven. No fairway bunkers on this hole. You do have trees on both sides and New Salem Road to the right. This hole plays downhill, parallels the car three fourth hole. Three bogeys in the last six holes with Jonathan. After none yesterday. Down the fairway. Jonathan's pretty much split the middle of the 7th fairway and now faces a downhill approach shot to a flag that's 11 on and 8 from the left. It's almost like a punch bowl. A tight green in front. Bogey 2 of his last 3 holes and 3 of his last 6. And each time he's bogeyed so far he's bounced back with a birdie on the next hole done that twice. Let's see if we can do it again. And about pin high left from back here. Sometimes looks can be deceiving. Yet another bounce back birdie. This time here at the par 4 7. This will once again get him back to 3 under the card. For the par 5 coming up. Oh, he's done it again. Three bogeys, and he's bounced back with birdies on. After all three of them. The comeback kid strikes again. We we'll head to the par 5 eighth. Jonathan now on the field of 558 yard par 5 eighth. This hole plays about 14 yards uphill from T to green. 273 to reach the second fairway bunker on the left. And left of those bunkers is a creek in play. The trees all down the right. It separates this hole from the 11th hole. Picked up the tee quickly there. It's usually a good sign if that happens. Jonathan has found the fairway here to par 5 eighth. I don't know if he's trying to give it a go in two or not. He does have an iron out. Oh, it's cut today. 23 on and 7 from the left side. Just be a layup for Jonathan. Parred both par fives yesterday, so he's even par on them. He'll be looking for a birdie. And the outside chance of an eagle. Kepler getting ready to hit his third shot into the par 5 eighth. Again, the hole is on 23 and 7 from the left. 
green widens back there. Kind of narrow in the front half of this green. Don't want to miss long. It's uphill, uphill from here. He birdied this hole back in 2014 to get the three under. That year he birdied four, six, and eight. Skip through to the back, off the back. Wow. Fourth shot up coming for Jonathan Kepler at the eighth. Third shot came in low, skipped through the green over the back. Green work with from here. Whoa. That to save par and avoid a fourth bogey of this round. for his par here at the eighth. To stay at three under. Fourth bogey on the second nine. And he plays a par fives and one over. This was the second easiest hole combined in all of the U.S. Open local qualifiers back in the last decade, the 2010s. Well, that's a number two to 446 yard par four ninth. Coming off close with the par five eighth. 305 to reach the penalty area down the left side. Trees down the right. This all parallels the converted par 4 10th. Another view of the clubhouse there. Jonathan has hit the fairway here at the ninth. Par four. Closing hole for him. Pin is on 16. And in the center. Birdie here to shoot 67, par for a 68. Birdie will match Chris Waters' 67 from yesterday. High right. You're looking for a fourth bounce back birdie. The 
have had that putt for a 67. And there's a view of Kennesaw Mountain in the background. As Jonathan Kepler gets ready to putt for birdie in a round of 3 under 67. Jonathan James Gray, JJ Gray is watching from behind this green. He should have just finished his round. Back to this, Jonathan, Mr. Birdie. Wow, four bogeys, and he bounces back all four times with birdies. So he comes home in even par 35 to shoot 367. Incredible. And he only had one par on his entire second nine. That was back there at the short par for a third. 